please welcome to the stage the president of global growth at Kraft Heinz, Mina Barton. Good afternoon. Come on, I need a response to that. Good afternoon. I hope everyone's enjoying their day so far. I know I've enjoyed this week immensely. And so here we are at the first year of Grocery Shop. You know, I didn't come to the first Shop Talk event, but I remember being here in March earlier this year and being amazed at the excitement and the frenzy around the grocery track. Because let's face it, this is an incredible time for us as an industry. And we all know the opportunities facing us are both daunting and exciting at the same time. Let's see if this works. Ah, there we go. Okay, so I want to start our conversation with the one thing that matters to everyone in this room, no matter what your role is, the consumer, or sometimes referred to as the shopper. I will often refer to her as she, even though she could represent an individual or families in a multitude of shapes and sizes. And each day, our consumer goes through most of the steps in the journey behind me towards a meal or making a snack. First, she discovers new ideas. Second, she looks for inspiration. She then plans her meals, she shops for ingredients, and she cooks and eats it. And if all goes well, she hopefully shares and basks in the satisfaction of a great meal or snack. And what's so interesting is that this journey hasn't changed very much over the last 70 or so years. But at every step of that journey, we as an industry have taken steps to evolve to meet the needs of our beloved consumers and shoppers. And this innovation and disruption is what gives rise to groups getting together in conferences like this to share ideas and move faster. And what's so interesting and what brings us all together is that the great enabler to that evolution is digital technology. It's created a seismic shift at every one of those six stages and has impacted our over $700 billion food industry, even though the consumer journey hasn't fundamentally changed. Take, for instance, the idea of inspiration. 50 years ago, most people got, people got ideas for recipes from a friend or a family member, from a recipe book, or maybe like a, from a food company like Kraft Heinz. This is how the ideas for that new great potato salad that stayed in families for generations would be shared. Today, she just needs to type chicken piccata, and she'll be bombarded with hundreds of recipes, with consumer ratings and tons of photographs. More choices than she could ever want, and more than she had access to in the past. So as we think about the journey, we realize that at every stage, the consumer has more options, more choices, and better information. And if you see how she's spending her time, you realize that it comes through in the choices that she's making every day. These stats behind me tell you the story. A whopping 80% of shoppers use the internet for grocery research, and 24% of that research is done on a smartphone or tablet. And out of that group, 80% spend their time shopping through an app a completely different way than she would have spent her time in the past, where she would have spent time in the store, picking up products, looking, at ide looking for ideas, and researching recipes and cookbooks. But there is another side to the story. As much as we put the consumer in control and give her the tools and choices, we hear consumers rumbling. People feel exhausted and confused by all the options that are out there. All the food blogs, the recipe email blasts, the ever-changing and often conflicting dietary trips, tips trending on Twitter. Overwhelmingly, we're all craving personalized, simple guidance to help us navigate the world of food. And there's a lack of one-stop solutions that take into account what the typical family is dealing with. Round-the-clock activities, schedules that don't match up, dietary restrictions, picky eaters, and limited time to run to the grocery store. 
In fact, 35% of consumers tell us they value convenience and saving time over saving money. And it jumps to a whopping 70% when we look at online shoppers exclusively. So what she's really saying, what she's really telling us and really hoping for and saying to us is, help me. Don't make me do all the heavy lifting. Give me integrated solutions that help me save time and energy. So how are we as an industry supposed to approach this challenge? You know, I came into this role about a year ago at Kraft Heinz. I grew up as a CPG and CPG mostly as a marketer. And the challenges and shifts in the last two years have been more than my entire 20-year career. Gone are the days when consumers are just willing to be told by companies like us what to eat. Today, it's the other way around. Connectivity is enabling consumers to tell us what they need, and it's up to us to fulfill that need. We are now the strategic curators of food. Three out of four consumers now expect companies to understand their needs and expectations even before they know what they want. We need to be mind readers, anticipating and giving consumers what they want. And companies and brands that step up will win. And companies and brands that don't will be unseated. And for Kraft Heinz, with a stable of iconic brands, the pivot was no easy feat. And that brings me to the title of this talk, Evolve or Get Left Behind. So how did we do it? How did we evolve or start the journey at Kraft Heinz? We're a company that's found in 98% of consumers' homes with multiple billion-dollar brands that has been around for over 100 years. And how did we change the way that we approach food? Well, we started with our brands, which is really our core strength. We added unexpected and unbelievable talent many of which is in the room with me here today, I'm proud to say. We built strong relationships, not only with our retail partners, but also with strategic partners. And we built unparalleled data to let us make the best decisions and to really understand the consumer and shopper in new ways. Each of these four things were critical to building our digital transformation to continue to evolve as a company. Now, I'd like to stand here and tell you that this has been the smoothest path with nary a bump in the road. But there really, it really hasn't been. There have been bumps. There definitely have been. And we as a company have learned a lot along the way. And what I want to share with you are the four mantras that have personally helped me the most from what we've learned. So number one, top of the list, create a culture that celebrates failure. Perfection is so yesterday, and speed really is the future for us. So as I often tell my team, fail fast, fail cheap, and fail often, and you'll get to a better consumer outcome. Now, that can be very easy for a small startup where your life depends on the outcome. But for a $26 billion company, it meant we had to actually reward people for taking risks. We did this through incubating people in an environment that allows them to thrive without fear of failure. The second learning is that the data is only as good as the consumer insights it uncovers. I'm sure over the last couple of days, we've all shared lots of data, and believe me, there's more data than we know out there. And for every point, there's another point that will counteract it. I guarantee you that. But the relentless pursuit of data should only serve one purpose, elevating our ability to understand, engage, and delight the consumer. So for me, that meant the data we need to focus first and foremost on was a consumer problem we were trying to solve. And that became our guiding light. So to that end, we knew we had to get to know the consumer better. We really need to understand the journey that she was going through each and every day and understand the pain points along that journey. So we did extensive research directly with the consumers in their homes, hands-on, and followed the consumer pain points throughout the journey to the root cause that would end up guiding us. And it was interesting. What she told us was that there were three areas that really deserved meaningful attention. First, inspiration and planning. 52% of shoppers say deciding what to make is the hardest part of putting food on the table. It's actually really hard to believe, given all the content that's out there. But what it told us was that we need to find a better way to curate that content. And on top of that, consumers told us they were spending 40 minutes a week planning meals and finding recipes. We knew this was real, meaningful time we could give back to our consumers if we could find a way to solve this pain point. 
Second, nutrition. Eight in 10 consumers are concerned about the nutritional content of their food, and they're seeking out information to make better decisions. We knew the consumer wanted help making, making meeting nutritional needs easier. And let's face it, there isn't a lack of content. You can pick up any product, you can look at anything online and find out the nutritional content. But what isn't easy for the consumer is to think about nutrition in a fully integrated way over a longer time horizon, like a week or so. And finally, convenience. More than 30% of people consider pleasing their family at mealtime a challenge. That number is far too high. We knew we needed to find a way to make the entire process simpler, easier, and more convenient. And somewhere along the line, families need to rediscover the joy of the entire process. Okay, so now the third learning, and the one that felt very counterintuitive to me as I was putting this together. Create a process around innovation. What I've really learned so far is that growth doesn't magically happen as much as we may want it to. Growth requires rigor, especially at a big company where there's a lot of competing demands, and where sometimes the very processes that allow large companies to succeed can actually turn to stifle growth. Creating a new framework around growth allows us to move with speed and agility, and it was something that unlocked a lot for us. So what did we do? Well, we knew that those three pain points that I just mentioned went hand in hand, each one impacting the other. So the solve was to focus on two macro ideas, or two macro solutions. First, hyper-personalization, which for me means bringing her personalization as close to an individual level as possible. And se second, creating seamless consumer experiences, bringing that whole journey together for her. We focused on building a process to identify solutions and created a culture, as I talked about earlier, that really embraced failure to the, on the path to succeed. So about six months ago, we created a new business unit called the Evolve Group, which thinks and acts like a startup. This nimble team generates ideas rapidly, learns quickly, and pivots fast. To date, they have created three new businesses that address the consumer pain points in a completely new way. And something that would have taken us 12 months, ago, months before now only takes us a few months. In short, they're acting like the founders of a new startup company in search of the next big food transformation. Now, I wish I could take you through some of those ideas, but they aren't quite ready for prime time yet. But picture this. Tools that will learn about you and your family, recommend meals, seamlessly connect you to retailers, know that your kid doesn't like spring, string beans and beets, know that you are on the paleo diet, and will keep you on budget and within nutrition guidelines. And they will help to solve the consumer pain points by putting the consumer at the center. We also knew there were going to be some areas that we couldn't build the, to build the solution. So we created a VC fund, Evolve Ventures, that allows us to invest in emerging companies that will transform the food industry. To date, we've committed $100 million to this initiative and brought in seasoned leadership to manage our investments. Another key area of opportunity is relationship marketing for us, how we interact with our current consumers. Kraft Heinz's legacy with this dates back to our original inspiration point for consumers, our recipe magazine, one of the original tools that shoppers used. And over the years, we were able to grow and shift that into one of our largest digital assets one with over 140 million visits per year. But it had grown stagnant and was no longer meeting the consumer's needs. So last week, we launched the first step of the transformation of this platform, which we expect to be complete in early 2019. Our goal is to improve the experience even further, solve the consumer pain point of inspiration, and bring our hyper-personalization, seamless integration, and mobile optimization. The next opportunity for us is e-commerce, and something that I'm sure has been discussed in almost every single room continuously all week. You know, the landscape is shifting so quickly, we knew we had to make this a top priority. I'm sure many of you know that just two years ago, only 15% of Americans were even able to buy groceries online. Today, that figure is over 80%. And today, total grocery sales are somewhere between 2 and 3%, but by 2025, they could be as high as 25%. Think about that. Think about that opportunity that this presents for us as an industry. Consumers are pushing us to move and shift faster. 
As a CPG company, we built a dedicated team of incredible talent and unleashed them to build partnerships with retailers and improve our fundamentals. We expect our e-commerce business to be about a billion dollars by 2020, and we're well on track for that growth. We're also making a big bet on artificial intelligence, as we knew it unlocked capabilities that we didn't have in-house. In July, we acquired a startup called Wellio, which, based, which is based in San Francisco. Wellio is an AI-driven platform that breaks down millions of recipes into single ingredients and matches them to grocery items from local stores. It knows what's in every recipe and can create infinite options for flexibility. For the consumer, it's like having a personal chef, shopper, and nutritionist all in one. And all of this brings me to our fourth guiding principle. Don't just build a team, build a movement. Create a unifying battle cry that makes teams excited to show up every day to work and grow the business. It was so important to me to bring in people with unexpected backgrounds and marry them up with the entrepreneurial minds from inside Kraft Heinz. And what unifies them and what makes them excited every day is a deep desire to drive the wave of growth that is hitting our industry and to better serve our consumers. I'm very proud to say this is an incredibly lean team, but it's tripled in the last year and is located in all the right places, San Francisco, Seattle, Cincinnati, and Chicago. So let's recap. It's an incredible time for us as an industry, and the rate of change we're experiencing is unparalleled. Brands and companies that embrace this change will continue to grow and win if they focus on the one thing that truly matters, the consumer. I've shared with you what we've learned so far and how we're thinking about this transformation at Kraft Heinz, and I hope you found it helpful. To be clear, though, we are on the first step of a thousand-step journey. We don't see this as some experiment. This isn't simply Kraft Heinz trying to get into a new business. This is the business. And this is where our industry is going, and the power of our brands will help us to accelerate it. It's not going to be easy, and sometimes it might not even be comfortable. But we know we must grow and evolve to continue to grow. I personally am excited for and embrace the future and look forward to working with many of you in this room to create happier consumers, helping them in every step of their journey to putting food on the table. Thank you.